An exciting moment from Alien, the outer space horror film that is setting box office records all across the United States. Alien, which I gotta admit scared me. I gotta admit it scared me too. Oh, all right. It's just <laughs> one of five new films we'll be reviewing on sneak previews. Two film critics discussing the latest movies in town. Now, the other guy who said he's scared is Roger Ebert, the film critic for the Chicago Sun-Times. My fellow chicken on today's <laughs> program is Gene Siskel, film critic of the Chicago Tribune. Two of the most successful genres of the last five years have been science fiction, and horror films, and Alien is both. It's a combination of some of the best space hardware since Star Wars, and the most gruesome bug-eyed monster since the creature from the Black Lagoon. The movie begins aboard a gigantic intergalactic freighter where the crew is in suspended animation until the onboard computer awakens them for an emergency. The captain explains why their mission has been changed. Well, some of you may have figured out we're not home yet. We're only halfway there. What? Mother's interrupted the course of our journey. Why? Yeah. She's programmed to do that should certain conditions arise. They have. Like what? Seems she has intercepted a transmission of unknown origin. She got us up to check it out. A transmission? Out here? Yeah. What kind of a transmission? Acoustical beacon that uh, repeats at intervals of 12 seconds. SOS? I don't know. Human? Unknown. So what? <laughs> we are obligated on the section. Well, I hate to bring this up, but uh, this is a commercial ship, not a rescue ship. Right. And it's not my contract to do this kind of duty. And what about the money? If you want to give me some money to do, I'd be happy to. Uh, you know, it's large. Right. Let's go with a bonus situation. We never can talk, we, can we, we just talk about the bonus situation. Sorry, can I say something? Let's talk about the bonus situation. There is a clause in the contract which specifically states any systematized transmission indicating a possible intelligent origin must be investigated. I don't want to hear it. We don't know that it's intelligent. I want to go home and party. Parker, will you just listen to the man? On penalty of total forfeiture of shares. Money. You got that? <laughs> well, yeah. All right, we're going in. Yeah. I think Star Wars kind of pioneered that idea that a spaceship, instead of being all kind of perfect and sterile like the one in 2001, would look more like a gut bucket like that, kind of a tramp freighter, and mm -hmm. there's the crew on board. The beacon signal comes from a nearby unexplored planet anyway, and so space regulations require them to land, and they do in one of the movie's really most inspired scenes. They explore a terrifying planetary landscape, they discover an ancient alien spaceship, and they work themselves into a very tight spot while their discoveries are monitored by television back on board. Can you see this? Yes, I can. I've never seen anything like it. Do 
you get a wonderful sense there of something that might have been waiting there a long time for somebody to find it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they go on, on board that mysterious ship and they wind up bringing back an extremely unwelcome guest on board <laughs> their own ship, an alien creature that's the movie's most original invention. Now, I don't want to give away too much. I'm not giving away too much when I say it's kind of a cross between a squid and a spider <laughs> and the thing. Mm -hmm. And it's not real great to look at because its body is covered with extraterrestrial intestines and the humans battle for survival. The alien oozes around the ship like a mucous membrane from outer space, and the movie is one of the scariest old-fashioned space offers I can remember. Well, it did scare me, too. I looked away, and I was yelling with, like, a few other people, it's going to hit them on the floor, it's going to come from the ceiling. It's in the and next row, it's behind me in the yeah. theater. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I, I want to say that, you know, strip away all the beautiful scenery and the evocative weirdness of the picture, uh, what we really have here is basically the haunted house film, only instead of a wild creature running around in a haunted house, we got a wild creature running around in a spaceship. And so this is not the greatest science fiction film ever made, even though it seems to be doing very well across the country. It's, well, I think the combination of horror and science fiction is a very appealing one right now, very commercial. There is one moment, though, mm -hmm. when the film does transcend just that horror, haunted spaceship sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's in this scene we just saw, as it goes on a little bit further, they enter that spaceship. They go inside, they find the alien pilot all desiccated uh, from his voids that might have taken place millions of years ago, and then they go into that big, enormous cavern down below and what they find there and so forth. It gives you a real sense, I mean, from the point of view of art direction and everything else, that this could have been an alien ship. It's not just another TV or movie creation. Yeah, one consumer point. A lot of young people are probably going to want to see this picture. They love horror films. This one's pretty bloody. It is pretty violent. And I think a lot of people, adults and kids, are going to be turned off and maybe frightened too much by it. So for young kids, certainly, this is not a picture to go see. It's R-rated. Yeah, for a, a reason. Yeah, there's a reason for it. Okay. Alien, the R-rated science fiction thriller with the creepiest monster in years, also got two yes votes, but...